Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about Death Prophet. This is a hero that's very, very strong right now, and mainly due to the items that are good. These two items are Veil and Ashivas, and then Eternal Shroud. They just kind of make you unkillable. Eternal Shroud helps uh, severely with this hero's innate mana problems. Also, I think the buildup of mana boots now is really great for Death Prophet, because something like Bassy just allows you to spam that Q during the laning stage and buff up heroes like your Tusk, who also will have mana problems. So this Bassy is just wonderful. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game Leap website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. In terms of starting items, you're going to go circlet, tango, stick, and three branches. You're going to skill your Q, and you're going to be using that Q to nuke out uh, the majority of range creeps, right? That tends to be the value. You can also hit the enemy safe laner a bunch, right? Uh, th th that tends to be what these ranged heroes do. The main thing you just don't want to do is eat the wave too much. At 290 movement speed with four armor, four armor is okay. It's okay. But at 290 movement speed, you, you very much can get stuck in the wave. Also, keep in mind he bought a salve here, then he's going to be going back into Bassy. And the reason why you buy something like salve on a hero that has an innate heal is just to make sure you don't get bursted down. Now, I think in this game, honestly, the salve from Mind Control is not good. The reason why I have that take is I just don't think that Faceless Void Oracle is blowing your ass out, right? I just don't think that that's going to happen with Tusk, right? This guy is going to, if they try to go on you, he's just going to destroy them. And so I just don't think that that was needed, but I do think in a lot of games, like against Terrorblade, the salve is extremely important. From there, he picks up a Wraith Band, which makes a lot of sense uh, against Faceless Void. This guy does mostly physical damage. The hero lacks a bit of armor, right? Obviously, if you're buying Veil, then... I'm like kind of not a fan of this build, but I think the attack speed and agility from Wraith Band is good with Tusk as well with Tag Team, so it makes a bit of sense. Also, something that I love that Mind Control does here is he's willing to just heal off a creep. Most players just don't do this. If the matchup's really easy, you can just do it on the enemy carry and it's better, obviously, but against Faceless Void, he can leap away and you never want to be in kill range, right? Don't just don't put yourself in a position where you can die. Heal off the creeps and then auto attack the crap out of the enemy carry. It's zero risk, high reward. From there, you, you finish up your wand or you can rush boots. Like sometimes I will just not buy the last branch. I'll just buy an earlier Bassy. Like I won't complete the wand because I'll have slots by not buying the salve, not buying the branch. And then you can buy Sage's Mask and boots. And I, I personally think that that's better in a lot of games but you know whatever and the main spike for this hero is at level three the reason why the heal doubles in damage and heal it heals you for 300 and does 300 damage this ability is one of the best spells in all of dota it's a 40 second cooldown so it's pretty long but you know generally it's just going to help you put in the work and they kill oracle from full i mean death prophet tusk is one of the strongest lanes in dota and is very difficult for these heroes to deal with so the next few things to talk about with death prophet is after you buy your mana boots and your wand Usually I like buying raindrops just because you really can just button mash the Q, uh, especially if you max the Q. He took a point in silence, which I don't know, I guess helps silence Oracle W, kind of. It like sort of helps you lock down Void. I mean, maybe that's part of the idea, right? You can maybe burst Void. I feel like it's a bit hard if he has a wand and strength red, so I don't know. Uh, but okay, when you get ulti, generally you just want to click it on the tower. It can feel somewhat bad to do this if you don't know where the enemy is, but like currently the Lena, the Nyx, and the Oracle were chasing the Huskar. This is a great time to just kind of click your ulti on the tower and get value out of it. A lot of people will try to hold the ulti for too long. It will prevent them from taking the tower. Best case scenario is you just kill the carry. Like taking the tower is great and all, but honestly, just solo killing the carry is best case scenario. Now in this game, you can see he wanted to just buy Shroud because it's a game where magic damage block is far better. You're going to die to the magic Lina, who's actually right click Lina, mid right click Lina, or you're going to die to Kunga, which is also mostly magic damage early game, right? You're not going to die to like Tidebringer off lane Kunga. This guy's feeding too. And then it's Nyx and Oracle, all magic damage. So I kind of agree that the magic damage is better. He changes his mind and goes back for Veil, which honestly, I don't like the Veil rush. I think Veil into Shiva's is like, or Shiva's as an item is insanely OP, right? Because it's 16 seconds of 15% spell lamp with whoever gets hit by the Shiva's. It's AoE movement speed slow, it's AoE attack speed slow, it's AoE heal reduction, it's incredibly good stats on Death Prophet who needs the armor in the late game, but you will need the armor in the mid to late game. This is why I hate Shiva's Rush in some games, because people, yes the item is good for fighting early on, because it's just movement speed, attack speed slow, spell ant, like that's the value of rushing it, but he doesn't even rush at this game, it's just like a casual veil, which I think is kind of cap. Like, yeah, the stats are okay, the regen's nice, it keeps him topped off. 
but you can stay topped off by just healing occasionally off a of creep if you really need it, in my opinion. And so, yeah, at this point, you're going to max your Q just so you can farm and push out the waves. If you plan on strictly fighting, max your E. That is the build. I like the value point in silence now. The slow is kind of good, right? Typically, you just don't unless you think it's good for the game. Like maybe you have to silence a Quap or something. I don't know. Spectre, if you're afraid she's going to shadow step out when you try to kill her. Something along these lines. But yeah, generally, when you take the tower, you just farm the area. Uh, it's a very common game plan, very straightforward game plan. When you have Exo, you look to take the mid tower. This game, the mid tower is already dead, so there's nothing to take. And so he can kind of just continue to farm unless a fight breaks out, right? When you have Exo, you look for a fight. It's it's a very straightforward hero in a lot of regards. But yeah, what would I buy over Veil? Well, in terms of items you can buy over Veil, I think the components of Shroud are kind of good. You can just buy a ton of strength. I think having uh, Windlace is a good item. I think Raindrops, like all of these early game fighting items, if you're going to fight early game, are incredibly good and should be purchased on a hero that wants to fight. I think Pavis is just a good item. Like, you don't even have to upgrade into Solar Crest. The HP and armor uh, from Pavis and just general sustain on this item is very good. Like, Raindrops Pavis makes you generally unkillable. So, I think that these smaller items, if you're going to fight, are very necessary. Uh, and so, keep that in mind. Like, Shroud Veil, not that good early on. Like, the AoE Spell Amp, it's kind of a small AoE. I mean, yes, it's 900, but it's around you. And it's only 10%. It used to be 18 in the patch before, which I feel like people just forget. But yeah, you can see the Shroud buildup is just insane. Like this item, because it just has two HP items, which is so funny. <laughs> it just builds from two HP items. All right, and this fight is kind of just the story of Death Prophet. He also has safety bubble, so he has HP regen, armor, HP regen, HP, HP, wand, right? Um, gets gone on. Obviously, they're 7k ahead, so this game is a bit of a stomp, but your hero is a good laner. And they try to kill him. It's not even close. He gets pavised by his tusk. So it's not close because your teammate should have a Solar Crest. Like Solar Crest is so good uh, with Death Prophet because the hero needs the armor early game. He is, you know, he has some, but whatever. They try to kill him. It's not close. Try not to just button mash your heal. Right? I think the way he does it is, is much, much better. But yeah, goes in first team, front lines, very standard. And this shows that you kind of don't need ult. Like usually... In the early game, you fight with ult, but you don't have to have it, right? Uh, like, that's kind of what I've seen. I, it used to be the case where you generally just waited. That's That was the, the common thought. But with how good this early game buildup tends to be, you kind of don't have to. You can just skirmish by spamming nukes and E, and it's like, fine. If you have no E charges, then you really shouldn't fight. That is where I would draw the line. But yeah, when you finish a shroud, you just get like an extra 100 health or something like that. It just gives you more health. It gives you 50 more health and 4 more strength, which is just comically strong. And then every time you get hit, you get more spell amp, and uh, you get mana if they nuke, which is just, once again, very, very powerful. And so, yeah, fight breaks out here, just isn't going to take any damage, because that's how this hero works. Safety bubble, shroud, and even though the Nyx burns, burns this mana here as he gets nuked, by a variety of heroes, he'll actually just get some mana back. Obviously, he can pop one too. But yeah, if the Lena nukes him, like gets hit by a torrent, I think he gets he pops his one. If this thing hits him, he'll he'll get like 40 mana back. And yeah, you just you just get some mana back. I mean, to be fair, you wouldn't have had mana problems in the first place, but Nyx Vendetta burns half your mana. <laughs> yeah, all of these spells just give him mana. And he takes no damage. And he has living armor. <laughs> It's like so goofy, I don't know, and then you just buy a Veil and you frontline and slow everyone and they can't move and they take a billion damage for 16 seconds, like, you can see why this hero, it's just the items, guys, like, items make the meta a lot of the time, like, I think that's a, the, that's a mantra a lot of us need to have, right, just like, items make the meta, this hero is not giga buffed, like, yeah, the W slow is really nice, but he is, he's, he's dominating the game with minimal, I would say he's probably gotten minimal value out of the W slow, I mean, 10% is good, let's be real. Right? It's like 40 movement speed a lot of the time, or 35, right? It's good. It, it's a lot of movement speed. It definitely matters. Like when he silences Kunkka here, it matters. It, help, it really does help him stay on top of this guy, like for sure. But it's not breaking the game. Now, at this point of the game, this is why DP, I think, tends to fall off because as the nukes fall off, the hero often falls off. When you don't have Exo, people will just fight anyway. And, and at this point of the game, like getting into mid at 20, Sometimes your nukes won't feel strong enough. Like, yeah, he's going to be able to kill the Kunkka here, pops the Veil, it's doing a ton of damage, 21 damage per second. He does kill off the Kunkka, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's good enough. But for the most part, your value is just going to be frontlining, eating spells for your team, and, and that's how you should see the hero. Spam the Q off cooldown, like, that's the main value to the hero. Honestly, as, as you begin to run out of charges of your E, you just got to spam the Q. 
A lot of people will just kind of forget or not value it enough. Spam the Q, hit level 15, take the Crypt Storm cooldown. People will take health at 15. I think it's stupid. I think the Crypt Storm cooldown just lets your damage scale and it lets your farming scale. So personally, the health talent's tempting, but I wouldn't take it. All right, and finally, you're gonna pick up your Shivas. I wonder if he takes the health talent. I feel like Mind Control is the type of guy to take the health talent. This guy gives me health talent vibes. Am I wrong? I mean, to be fair, you actually have mana problems with these two items, which might seem weird, but Chivas doesn't really give you mana. Nowadays, Shroud doesn't unless you're getting nuked. So I can see a world where you take health because you just don't have mana. Usually the next item you buy is Kaya Sanj. I think maybe when you get the Kaya, which he could buy next, then you can afford to take the Q. So I think that's probably the line. I would buy Kaya next and take the other 15 talent because I really do feel like it's like every time I take this, the, the health talent, I regret it. Like every time I, I've done, because I've played a lot of the heroes, one of my most played or, and favorite heroes. Yeah, it takes health. I just think that if you're not going to die, which you're not in, in a game like this, you just don't need it. Like, look at, look at this. He's never close to dying. Gets nuked. It does nothing. Gets nuked. It does nothing. Heals a bunch, which I think, honestly, he, clicking heal here, it's fine on Oracle to damage him. Pops Exo, which he should have popped a bit earlier, to be honest. You click Shivas, they can't get away. Uh, these guys get hit by it, and then for 16 seconds, they take 15% and Why is it that long? 40% movement speed slow, so they can't move, which isn't that as long. It's only four seconds. Uh, but the amp is for 16 seconds. So Nyx is just permanently going to get nuked down. And yeah, you just shred heroes as a result. And that's a GG. That's the GG. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.